So let's see how the matrix factorization technique is applicable on the recommender system. How these techniques are actually applicable on recommender system. So let's see step by step. So first thing that uh, in this in this lecture in this lecture we are just we are going to learn how this matrix factorization techniques are applicable on principal component analysis and SDB, SDB means singular value decomposition technique. This is the one technique in applied mathematics. We'll see these things. We will connect the dot between these two because already we have seen the principal component analysis technique. Now let's try to connect the dots. After after connect these dots or the matrix factorization to these, these two techniques, now we extend the same concept to the recommender systems. So in this lecture, just try to understand how this matrix factorization techniques are actually useful in PCA. Okay, and now in next video, we will try to connect these dots to be in a recommender system. So, so in this lecture, we are just going to discuss the recommender system that we in future video we will try to connect the dots the matrix factorization so in short i have written matrix factorization as mf okay <clears throat> we'll see it in next video now in this video we will trying to first thing that in the other main main agenda of this video is first we have to learn what is We will learn what is AMA, what is matrix factorization. We will learn first it, and uh, and uh, second agenda is we will connect this. We will connect this matrix factorization technique to the PCA. And singular values decomposition. We will connect it. Okay. The matrix factorization that we are going to learn it is a it's a technique in applied mathematics chapter it's a, it's a technique in applied applied mathematics It's a technique in applied mathematics. Okay. So, so let's start. So first, what each position is? What each matrix factorization? Let's try to understand. What each matrix factorization? What is it? So the answer that that arises here. So let's try to understand through this example. Suppose A is a matrix. A any matrix. Suppose there is a any matrix. Suppose let it's any matrix. Now, first job that we have to do, we have to convert this matrix to the multiplications of as some other matrix. Convert suppose let's take C, B, C, D. We have to convert. So these are means. These are means the job is the we have to convert this matrix a the product of other matrix product of other matrices we have to job this doing this job so that the 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 product of the other matrices that we are going to discuss that there have another name the matrix decomposition means we have to decompose a matrix into the other matrix so because of this reason we call this technique as a matrix decomposition okay decom matrix decomposition okay and uh, if you take if you take uh, another example suppose let a is equals to i have take this example b into c the bc that 
are called here the multiplicative decompositions of the B and C. That these things are called the multiplicative. multiplicative decomposition of A that's the thing because of this thing okay this technique and other language because of this reason this technique are called the matrix decomposition technique I think you got the idea now let's try to why we call this is a matrix factorization MF why we call matrix factorization why why it is matrix factorization now let's try to got the answer let's try to got so because suppose let's take if we take a scalar quantity suppose let's take i am taking here uh, as scalar quantity e 10 so 10 can be written as in this form 5 into 2 means what 5 and 2 that we got these two things are called the factors of 10 these are the these are the factors of 10 okay so so same reasons also applicable here if we instead of using the scalar quantity if we take a is equals to b cross c these symbols is for scalar multiplication this symbol is for matrix multiplication okay because of these reasons here b and c are the factors of a factors mean the scalar factors scalar factors here the matrix factors matrix factors of a okay because of this reason this technique is called the matrix factorization technique okay i think you will understand why we call this technique as a matrix factorization okay i think you got the answer now let's try to understand this matrix factorization technique so with the help of pca and sbd means principal component analysis and support vector this is sorry singular value decomposition technique okay let's so the job that we are going to do we have to do the, this matrix factorization technique we have applied this technique to the pca to the pca means principal component analysis principal principal component analysis and we will try to extend this concept into the SBD means SBD to these things are the singular value decomposition technique singular value decomposition we will extend this concept into okay so let's see how we'll convert so the first what is the just recap the principal component analysis first then we will try this try to connect this dot between them so so what is this principal component analysis what is it what is this principal component analysis? let's try to connect What is it? The principal component analysis that job that we are going to because to convert a higher dimensional data into a lower dimensional. That is the job that we have to do. We have used this principal component analysis example for, for a high dimensional to convert to high dimensional data to a lower dimensional. 
to a lower dimension. Okay, we will convert this job into this dimension to high to low. That's the main job in PCA. Okay. So suppose let let x is a data matrix we have. Suppose let it has a number of data and a d number of features. So because of that, this is a data matrix. Suppose let this is a data matrix. Let this is a data matrix, and uh, in this data we have the a n is equals to number of data points. number of data points and here d here d this d is equals to number of features in this data number of features in this in this data okay this is the simple let data matrix now we have seen that in the data matrix so for principal component analysis first we will convert this data matrix into a covariance matrix. So, if you remember the covariance matrix, it's it's simple the transpositions, multiplications of this transposition into x by divided by n minus 1. These are the covariance, this is the covariance matrix, and the dimension of this covariance matrix is d cross d. Okay, why these things? d cross d. This is the simple the uh, covariance matrix and uh, and uh, we'll see, we have already seen just if you forget just recap this principal component analysis then you will go to the answer okay this is the simple the the covariance matrix this is the covariance matrix okay these are the by this thing because the dimension the dimension of the x transpose x the dimension here is the x transpose x dimension is n cross d so the transpositions dimension it will be d cross n and the x dimensional it is n cross d because of the, these reasons this is the d cross n and this a minus 1 is a scalar quantity Example, it is a scalar quantity. It is a scalar quantity. Okay. This is called the covariance matrix. Now the characteristics of this covariance matrix is is like that. The characteristics of this covariance matrix is like this kind of characteristics we have got. So the eigenvalues of this of this covariance matrix is let let the eigenvalues of this covariance matrix is lambda one, lambda two. Suppose it's the d-dimensional matrix, so it's eigenvalue up to d lambda d. Okay, and the eigenvectors corresponding to each eigenvalue, let's w w i the eigenvector. Let's call this eigenvalue is W. The eigenvector for is eigenvalue is W1, it's W2, it's WD. Okay. Let these are the eigenvalues and corresponding these are the eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. Okay. Let these things we have seen. Now, what is the relations between how to convert this higher dimensional to a lower dimensional? That job that we have doing that we have to do. Suppose it's a d dimensional. Now we have to convert this into a d dashed dimensional. That is the job we have to do here. And d dashed must be the lower value than d. d dashed must be a lower value than d. So how we'll convert? We have to top d dashed lambda size. We have to choose. We have to choose top means according to the increasing order top d dash lambda i's to stop d dash lambda i's we have to choose it 
okay and corresponding its w i's corresponding its w i's will be its w i's will be its eigen vector okay eigen vectors okay according to this eigen value tops d dash eigen value we have to choose uh, the eigen vector by, by simple using this technique we have convert this higher dimensional into a lower dimensional so just we have to find the eigen values and eigen vector that's the job that we have to do okay that we have seen in tca okay this is a simple principle component analysis that we have seen now let's try to connect this principal component analysis technique to the matrix factorization. How we'll connect this thing? Okay, let's see step by step. So the we have to actually doing the job. We have to find the eigen values and eigen vectors for the covariance matrix. So here covariance matrix is S D cross D dimensional. So first we have to doing the matrix factorizations for this covariance matrix. So suppose let we have to convert this W is the lambda capital lambda and this is the W transpose W transpose W lambda W transpose that is job that we have to do now what will be the dimension of edge vector actually these are the edge matrix if you call these are the edge matrix these are the edge matrix Okay, now what is will be the dimensional for edge matrix? Uh, this dimensional here first, its dimensional will be so it start d to d, so its dimensional will be d cross n. Okay, sorry, sorry for that. D cross d, its dimensional will be d cross d. Similarly, its dimensional will be d cross d. Okay, and now its dimensional will be also d cross d. Edge matrix is a square matrix here. Okay, these things are actually principal component analysis technique. These are the actually principal component. And W transport is the transport matrix of this W. Okay, now let's what is the value of H? H matrix. What is W actually here? What is the W? So this is the actually matrix factorization technique. That thing we have seen. These are the matrix factorization technique. These are the matrix factorization technique. Okay, that's thing. So we'll see in future video how to doing this. But now let's try to connect the dots between matrix factorizations and principal component. Now, what is the significance of this W? So the W here is a D D cross D dimensional vector. D cross D dimensional vector. Once if you consider these things as a w1 small w1 means it is the suppose that it is the column vector actually the column vector of this capital w so let this is a w2 column vector this is the w3 means column vector of the w these are the column vectors of the w okay and as well it's the column vector wd because it is a d cross d dimensional vector Okay, so this is the D cross D dimensional vector, and these are the these are the, the is dimensional of is dimensional of it. Yes. It's dimensional of it is a column vector. It is a column vector, so its dimensional will be how much column? Single column. First, how much row? D row into single column. This dimensional here. And these things are called the these vector actually called the these are the eigen vectors of these are the eigen vectors of the set S. These are called the eigen vectors. That is the main important. Okay, these are the eigen vectors of S. Now let's see what is actually the lambda let's see it what is this capital lambda 
this is also a vector this is sorry this is also a matrix and the dimension of this matrix is d cross d so this matrix is simple a diagonal matrix okay so the diagonal value the diagonal element of this element of this matrix is lambda one small lambda one lambda two lambda d and rest of the null diagonal element is zero okay rest of the null diagonal element is zero these are the d cross d these are the lambda one lambda two lambda three lambda d these are the rest of the e equals to now the the lambda the lambda i that we have put here the lambda i is lambda i here is the eigen values of s these are the eigen vectors of s and corresponding these are the eigen values of s this is the important these are the called the eigen values of s okay i think you got the answer these are the this is the important by simple doing this mal matrix multiplication job we can easily find what will be the matrix eigen value and what will be the eigen vector that's the simple job you have to do i think you got the answer how this matrix multiplications matrix factorization techniques are important to find this in pca how it is important you got the answer okay so these are the simple simple pca technique that we have already connected the dots between the matrix factorizations and the pca okay now let's i let's try to connect the singular value decomposition decomposition what is this let's try to understand it what is singular value decomposition technique now let's try to connect the dots between the matrix factorizations and singular value decompositions problem what is this singular value decomposition what is this technique the full name of this is singular value decomposition singular value decompositions what is this so let's try to connect it so this this technique the singular value decompositions is a simple technique of the matrix factorization technique it is a simple matrix factorization technique that's related that's also related to this principal component analysis technique. it's a matrix factorization technique technique that is related to the principal component analysis technique okay it's related to the principal component let's see understand let's see so the principal component analysis in principal component analysis a and the, so first compare it to the principal component analysis to the sbd so in principal component analysis the matrix that we have used in the principal component analysis the matrix that we have used this matrix is a s that we have used if you just if you just try to remember the characteristics of this matrix is a square matrix first first it must be a square matrix and as well it's a symmetric matrix okay because we have to actually just try to see the actually it is the multiplications of two terms a single x data matrix it's the multiplication of a data matrix x transpose x so because of this we got this square matrix and uh, and uh, must be since we have multiplying this transformation to x is must be a symmetric matrix okay that's the first characteristics it's a square matrix so it's a square matrix and it must be a symmetric matrix it must be a symmetric matrix okay there, that is the principal component analysis that the x but in a, in SBD, in singular decomposition, singular singular value decompositions in SBD, the matrix SBD, the matrix that we are going to use, it's a rectangular matrix. Simple, it is a rectangular matrix X. 
not it. It's any matrix, it's any rectangular. It's any rectangular matrix that we have used. Okay. So here any. So its dimensional will be let let for example say it let the dimensional is n cross d that we have seen means simple a data matrix act you can treat these as a simple data matrix okay these things are the simple data matrix another way this is a simple data matrix x okay now let's try to understand this SPT, this x how to how to the matrix factorization technique how these things are important in SPT technique let's see so the matrix that we have x it's the simple n cross d matrix ordered matrix and the first thing that we have to convert it's a u it's sigma we have to decompose like that and it's v transport v transport that is the decomposition that is the factorizations we have to do that is the now let's try to connect the dots these matrix factorizations to the this matrix how this matrix how this h factor matrix are important to find some to find some characteristics of our data set let's try to connect this dot first okay we have used that here so let it is a matrix it's a matrix it's a matrix so what will be the dimension first understand it what will be the dimension of u what will be the dimension of u the dimension of u it will be here so first it is starting from n so must be it is a square matrix n cross n and it's end with d so dimension of the v will be d cross t okay. now based on this dimension of the sigma these these things are called the sigma greek letter sigma this dimension will be n cross d so because these regions it is cancelled out this and this and cancelled out this d this d cancelled so a matrix multiplication is possible here these are the simple day definitions now these matrix are called the these matrix the right side this matrix is called the right singular valued matrix of x this matrix is called the right singular valued matrix we'll see how these matrix are important in our computation we'll see these things but this matrix is called right singular right singular vectors of of x and this matrix is called the left singular vectors of x This matrix, this matrix u is called the left and this r is called the right singular okay now uh, just try to compare this thing to the uh, pca principal component analysis in pca we have seen this instead of using x we have used here the covariance vector covariance matrix x cross d and we will decompose into like that the first one is w and the second matrix is the capital lambda and the third matrix is the w transpose since it's the square matrix since it is a square matrix so its dimensional must be the square d this d cross d this is also d cross d okay that we have seen so now this w what is the importance of w here and what is just try to compare it side by side i think it will be better 
so this lambda is this lambda it's give the role up to find the eigen values of x eigen values of s this w and this w are given the role to find the eigen vectors of x given the role to find the eigen vectors eigen vectors of s okay we have already seen this thing. and these things are called actually pca these are the pca technique we got we have seen and this is the singular value svd technique okay now let's try to compare this side by side what is the significant here sigma here actually middle value give the eigen values here the same kinds of things also we will got from this sigma uh this is sorry this is the this is capital this is sigma and this is the capital lambda greek capital lambda is the capital sigma okay so the capital sigma the dimensional of the capital sigma in sbd dimensional is what is here dimensional is n cross d here dimensional is n cross d yeah, this matrix actually will be look like this type of means here we have how much row n rows and d column so the or lambda one sorry here i'm taking the diagonal element as like this this one smallest one smallest two small s d and rest of the zeros rest of that elements are the zero this is the n cross t and here must be n must be less than the dimension Let's see this data actually here the number of data points and ad is the must be the number of data features vector here d must be maybe equal or like that like this kind of vectors we will got okay when the d is less than equals to n if this thing happen then we got this kind of rectangular matrix so here this s one that we got the s i is, is a i the give the role it is the singular values of this value are called the singular values of x this value is called the singular values these values are called the singular values of s and this is a diagonal matrix okay this is a diagonal matrix okay i think you got the answer now how this singular singular values are related to this eigen values this is the main main thing that we have to connect how these things are related to this eigen value this is this for the for any data matrix and this is pca we use the only covariance matrix in pca we have used the covariance matrix but here we have used any data matrix now the main thing is how to connect this dot how this is i's are related to the eigen values of s that is the main job so the relations between these two the relations now the relations between eigen values of s and the singular values of x singular values of x the relations is the s i square by the n minus 1 is equals to lambda i these are the relations between these two values okay if we simple take our data sets and using simple the matrix factorizations then we can easily find its its eigen values okay they have no need to calculate it that's the main importance of it now let's see what is this significance of w a dot w transpose let's see it so the ui the w means here uh, in, in w 
we got it u and w transport we got it v transport so let's see what is the importance of u so the u we got it this is the u matrix what is the dimension of u here the dimension is n cross n here the dimension of is u is equals to n cross n here this is let the first column of u this is the u1 this is the first column let let it is the first column u2 it's the second column let let u3 it's the third column like that since it is n cross n u n and this is u i the dimension here it will be here the dimension is its dimensional is it's a single column n rows the dimensional is n cross one its dimensional is n cross n okay now this i this i this column is called the this column of u is called the eigen vector of of x comma x transpose x x into x transpose okay these things are actually called the eigen vectors of x comma x transpose eigen vectors of it so okay but here it is the what in pca we see it the eigen vectors of simple s but here it instead of using ac it's the eigen vector of x into x transpose so let's see it's dimensional matched or not so what is the dimension of x you remember the dimension of x is what let's see dimension of x is n cross d so it's dimensional is n cross d and x transpose its dimension will be d cross n if you see if we just start doing the job multiplication the job then its dimensional will be n cross n okay that's the both the, the same dimension okay it's possible to find the eigen vector this h ui this h column vectors are called the eigen vectors of our this x into x transpose that's the important importance now let's see the same things also applicable for v v so v will be v suppose let's instead of using the v v transpose here I have used the V symbol It's better for us. V is how much dimensional V is D cross D dimensional. So it's V transpose. V transpose is D cross D dimensional. So V will be like same D cross D dimensional. Let's see it is the V1, it's V2 column, V3 column, like that V D column. like this kind of matrix we got okay this is the d cross d and the dimensional of the edge vector it's the column vector of v it's the column vector and the dimensional its dimensional will be its d dimensional into one d row and single column and this the importance of it it's the eigen vector of importance of this h column vector is the it is this also it's called a it's also called a eigen vectors of but in some opposite multiplication x transpose x x transpose it let's see what will be its dimension so the dimension of x transpose dimension of the x transpose is what if dimension of x is n cross d so dimension of the x transpose it will be d cross n and dimension of x is n cross d if we doing the multiplications between them then we got d cross d matrix then we got d cross d matrix example this is the eigen vectors of x transpose x and these are the eigen vectors of x x transpose x into x transpose Okay, that's the importance of the singular value decompositions. 
both are the same things actually at the end of the day both will doing the same thing so in pcf first we have to calculate the uh, uh, covariance matrix but in singular value decompositions if we apply it we can direct you can you can easily direct find the eigen vectors and eigen value they are no need to find the uh, the uh, the covariance matrix okay that is the main important thing here i think you got the answer so if you just summarize this thing if you just summarized this thing that we have got so in uh, first in pca if you just summarize this thing that we have learned in pca what we have seen in pca first we have on calculate calculate the covariance matrix first we calculate the covariance matrix of the data matrix x we got it is s yes, and by simple using s and it's after after matrix factorizations we got this easy like w capital gamma w transpose okay that matrix and the importance of this w is the w's are give us gives us the eigen vectors this w are gives us the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix is okay and this lambda this lambda are gives us the eigen values this lambda gives us the eigen values eigen values of the uh, covariance matrix is okay that's the importance of it eigen values of is that's we have seen in pca but uh, in if you use this thing same things also if we use in singular value decomposition technique then instead of use the finding the covariance we have direct use this in x to the to the matrix factorization technique but u sigma v transpose so the the sigma here the sigma here gives us the singular values these are gives us the singular values means si this gives us the singular values si and the relations between these eigen values and the singular values the relations between it is like that the relations between is is i is i square by n minus one simply equals to lambda i that's the relations we got we have find and the ui here ui gives us the this u and v this u are gives us the simple the eigen vectors this also gives us the eigen vectors of x into x transpose this keeps us the eigens vectors of x and x transpose and this v transpose uh, gives us these x transpose gives us the eigen vectors of just opposite x transpose x but that is the job that we have seen here that is the thing i am doing both are the at the end of the day both are the same both are the both are the applications of matrix factorizations but in different point of view so i think the is bd techniques are more easy so here we don't need to compute the covariance matrix we can directly apply it in on our data set okay that is the main importance of singular value decomposition technique okay so that we have seen here we have connect the dots and the end of this lecture we connect the dots this pca will connect the dots the singular value decomposition technique and and connect these two things into the matrix factorization the how much important it in, in matrix factorization so we will see the connected we will connect it 
so in future video in next future video we will we will see how to connect this matrix factorization technique to the recommended recommendation system how to connect these things so i think matrix factorization is how much importance when we also you have seen so in clustering techniques also we can connect this matrix factorization to the clustering technique as well okay we will see these things in the next in in the next few videos we will see in this chapter we will see how this matrix factorization techniques is useful in the machine learning okay i think from this discussions you got the idea how the principal component analysis are actually you work how the matrix factorization techniques are actually work behind the principal component analysis okay and in next the next future video we will see how this also how this matrix factorization techniques also useful in recommendation systems to build a recommendation system we'll see these things i think the motto of this lecture is you have clear how uh, what is this matrix factorization technique and uh, how these things are used uh, useful in the principal component analysis i think you got the idea